Hey friends, if you're writing playwright tests going beyond a couple of instructions, you probably faced the problem already that it becomes very hard to understand what assertion, what action comes from where in your code base. And this is where you would usually reach for test steps. And I love test steps, but I found it to be a lot of typing and it's also not nice to read. In this video, I will show you how you can use decorators to save a lot of keystrokes and make adding test steps to your project more convenient. Let's go. Decorators are a highly requested JavaScript feature that didn't make it into the language yet. The idea is that when you're having a JavaScript class like this one, that there's an easy way to extend, replace, access, or initialize the values, the properties that are defined in this class. And ideally, you could define a single function then call this add syntax, and you could start tweaking your JavaScript classes to your liking. And you know what's using classes in Playwright land? Page object models. And they make a perfect fit to be combined with decorators. But didn't I just say that decorators aren't implemented anywhere yet? And that's right. So far, decorators are still an ECMAScript proposal. And this proposal has been in the making for years. But it now reached stage three of the proposal process, which means that this feature, this language feature is ready to be implemented. And we're only waiting for the browsers to catch up. And you know who couldn't wait for this language feature to land? The TypeScript team. Since TypeScript 5, which was released one and a half years ago, you can now use decorators in your TypeScript code. So when you're writing your Playwright code, also using TypeScript, you can go ahead and you can add these fancy add statements to your page object models and start extending the methods included in your pomps. Let's find out why decorators make such a perfect fit when you're using test steps in Playwright. Here we have a quick Playwright test that is included in docs spec TS. So we're dealing TypeScript here and it uses a page object model that comes in as a fixture. If you haven't seen this pattern of combining fixtures with page object models, check out this video. But in a nutshell, this test case navigates to the Playwright docs. It checks if the search works all right. It checks if the GitHub link in the header goes to the right place. And then it toggles the dark mode to see if the CSS is all right. And if we now run and inspect this test case in UI mode, we will find that all these actions, all these methods of this page object model are nicely grouped. So whenever now an action or an insertion fails here, we know immediately where this code is located. Let's have a look at the page object model that's used in this test case. Playwright page is a pretty common JavaScript class or page object model that defines all the locators here on top. Then we assign them in our constructor. And here we have the methods that I just showed you in the actual Playwright test case. Note that each of these methods is wrapping the Playwright instructions into a Playwright test step. And this is great when you then inspect your tests in UI mode or in your test results. But when you add more methods to your page object model, it's a little bit tedious to always include this extra line. And as one of you pointed out here in the YouTube comments last week, it's not really pretty to have this line in every method. So let's bring in some decorator magic. First of all, I will remove the test step from this search method here, and I will add a line on top, and I will say that I want to use a decorator that is called step. And you see it here already, TypeScript isn't particularly happy about it because step isn't defined yet. So let's define a step function. And there's a lot going on here. So let's see what is happening in this decorator. Whenever you apply a decorator to a class method, this decorator will be called with a function reference to the method that you applied the decorator to. So we see here, we have the search method, which comes out here as target. And it also gives us some meta information about where and what this decorator was applied to. And then your decorator needs to return another function, which will replace the actual function target. So whenever someone calls search of an object that was created from this Playwright page class, because we decorated it with step, this function will be called instead. And because we have a reference to the original function, we can use some low level JavaScript to call this function with the same context. So the context is the one of the Playwright page object, and we will pass in any arguments that this function was called with. 
So this decorator here right now isn't doing anything particular but calling the original method, which means that when we head back to UI mode, we should still have a passing test case. And this looks great. Our search code is still running. So we're searching here docs, but we now lost our test step. So let's bring that back in using our decorator. Now that we have the base structure set, we can go into our replacement method and we can now return a test step instead. And I will give it a proper name in just a second. So we define the usual ASIC function and here inside our test step, we will return our initial function call. But what should we call our new test step? Let's bring in some meta information. So first of all, remember when I said that this runs in the same context as the original method, we can always reach for the constructor and its name, which is playwright page. And then we also have the context, which was the second argument of our decorator to access the original function's name. So with this, we now have a new test step name. We can pass this in here. Let's do it like this. And let's also clean up a little bit. So let's remove this test step and add the decorator here. And let's remove this test step. And let's add the decorator here. So let's see what happens now when we run our playwright tests again. And look at this. I don't know how you feel about this, but I think this is pretty exciting. By adding a single line, we are now able to wrap all our page object model methods in a proper test step that includes the base class name and the actual function method. I think this is beautiful. But let's not stop here and also make it possible to give our test steps a proper human readable name. To do that, let's rename our step function to something like decorator and wrap everything in another function that we call step. This function now will return our decorator function. And you might have guessed it, now we can define decorator arguments. So let's define an optional step name. So here we want to have it as type string. And when we define our test step, we want to check if step name is defined, we're going to use this one. And otherwise, we will use the combination of the constructor name and method name. And now as the last step, we have to change our decorator calls to execute them. So let's call step here, step there, but also pass in here a custom string, which let's say search YOLO. And let's run our playwright test again. And isn't this exciting? So we can now decorate our method calls either with a custom string or fall back to the class name plus method name. And I can't tell you how excited I am about this. There's one last cleanup that I would like to do. Our step decorator right now is defined in this TypeScript file that should only define our page object model, playwright page. So let's move it over to our base TS file. Here we go. Let's also export it from here. All right, now we can go back and we can import it from here. This looks great. And now we can reuse this step decorator across all our page object models. And with that, we made it to the finish line and added test step decorators to a page object model. And I think this is a beautiful way of using TypeScript. If you want to have a look at the code that I just showed you, it is available in our GitHub repository, including all our Playwright examples. So you can always go to checklyhq slash Playwright examples on GitHub. And if you have any questions or comments or requests for future videos, leave a comment below. I promise I read all of the comments. And with that, it's enough complicated TypeScript for a day. And I will talk to you very, very soon again when I show you the next Playwright tip.